Go for it. What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight, Thursday's MLB slate. Um, I had a really frustrating day. I ended up bubbling the, uh, the, the 777 because I No, you is that what ended up happening? Yeah, I switched from Kershaw the first day, part of the day. Oh, oh I switched okay. I switched from Kershaw to uh to what's it called? It only, I still would only finish like ninth or something, but it, still that would have been nice. Um uh but to Kershaw to uh Freed. And I was like debating between the two. I was just like, I don't know if they're gonna like and, and I was right about Kershaw's leash because the guy had a freaking perfect game going at 80 pitches. He's never had one before, and he's one of the greatest pitchers ever, and you're not gonna let him pitch. I understand. I would bet you anything that that's gonna be one of those things that um I don't know. I I I know it's early in the season, but I, I feel like in, in that situation, you have to let your number one starter have a chance at a, at a perfect game. That just doesn't happen enough. And he only had 80 pitches anyway. So that's something that, that I was frustrated by. I was uh, one good thing I wanted to mention is I've eight for eight on my NBA bet so far. seems that pretty, pretty standard line here. Take I, I've, I've taken the favorites and I've, I've also taken the uh, under in every game so far, which is what you should be doing because Vegas doesn't always announce what they're going like they don't always project they project teams as if they how they play during the season and that's just not the way the playoffs work especially in a one game format so i'm going to be looking to do more of that as the as the time goes on but i do i do encourage everybody to check out my bets of the day every day because we've been on fire i might only put four or five of them out there but those are ones that i like and and uh they've been absolutely on fire so far to start the uh, nba season nba postseason so anyway sheets you had some stuff to talk about and then we'll get to the night slate yeah this is gonna get a be the most irrelevant thing ever but this was on my mind so this is transparency okay. so my, my baseball slate last night all right i, I it, it cost me because of mike ferry okay now mike ferry just so you know he used to be the the coach of penn state and, and now uh, college basketball and now he's the coach of umbc which um you might if you might remember they, they're the ones that knocked off uva as like the 16th seed a few years yep, ago I do, okay yeah. yeah so so the, I, guess, I guess whoever the coach was there got a better job and this guy replaced them okay so I was coaching my AAU team last night and it's not, I'm not the head coach of this. When I'm the head coach of a team, it runs like much differently. Like everybody gets there a half hour early or they have, have to run. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, it's mm-hmm. everything runs a little more like clockwork, but, but when I'm an assistant, I just kind of kind of deal with what everybody else's philosophy is. So I get to the gym. I had it all set up because it, the, the practice is going to be from five, five till six 30. Okay. And I was going to be able to get back, look at my lineups, put everything in. Okay. So it's now 5.15 and no one's getting ready. Everybody's like slow. Everybody's getting whatever. And I'm not paying attention to the time, whatever. And then we, we practice going on. And Mike Ferry actually has a kid on the team. Okay. Now he's a head, D1 head coach, whatever. But he, in this situation, is just a father, right? He's not supposed to be freaking commenting on anything. So anyway, with about 15, 20 minutes to go in practice, he starts freaking barking stuff, like from, from the bench, right from just just at like the coaches no you got to tell him this and he just jumps in and starts freaking talking and i'm telling you if this this were my show i don't care who he is he could get kicked out of the freaking gym right but for for whatever reason these other coaches there were like intimidated by oh yeah listen to coach this 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 so it ended up running like a half hour late because of this and i didn't even realize it because it's another thing they don't have a score clock there so anyway so when i got out of there it was already seven o'clock and games had already locked so everything that I put in earlier is just gone. It's just, it, these are my lineups. I don't even know who's playing. I don't even know whatever. So I get back and I look at my 555. The first thing I noticed was, I'm going to pull up my screen here for a second. Um, where is my screen? Okay. Uh, so the first thing that I noticed in my lineup from, from yesterday is that, um, what's his name? Is that uh, Tony Kemp wasn't playing. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay. So 3,300s down the drain, 0.4% ownership because he wasn't playing. The next thing I noticed was that why the hell is Robbie Ray like 6%? And I'm like, oh, I know why, because the game's not going to freaking go off because it's going to freaking rain out. And I'm a freaking idiot for having Robbie Ray. Right. And then next thing you know, like I see Vlad Guerrero hit a home run and I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm going to waste like a, 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 a good start. I have a Sean Murphy home run also. And Robbie Ray isn't even going to play. And then like the, like the gods are like on my side. They're like, play ball in Ch- Chicago. I'm like, no way. I'm actually now getting the Cy Young guy at 6% ownership. And he proceeds to have a terrible game. 
God damn it. That's I'm really sorry annoying. to say it, but I hate to tell you this. I don't think the ownership would have been any different on him. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, nobody's know. playing him against the White Sox. Oh, um, so, 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 so in any case, so I ended up literally for Burns, I had three guys that carried the whole lineup to the min cash pretty much. And I was, and I was saying, I was wondering what ended up happening to you. Cause you were, you had a similar like type score. I finished yeah, right, like right there. And you got it a little differently. Like you got, you had the picture, you had the Montas. Yeah. But, but yeah, you I just had the, nothing from the rest of my lineup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I, I figured maybe, maybe we could have combined in something or whatever it is, but, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a little, so, so I don't have to feel bad. It wasn't Robbie. It wasn't and that was my only, that was my ML, only MLB at that over on the day. And I got that one right too. I just realized, uh, cause that was, what'd you bet Rob, Vlad, Vlad Guerrero over the entire rest of your, of no, your I had Toronto run. over New York, but when asked on air live yesterday for a home run pick for the night. And I said, Vlad Guerrero, I know it sounds like an obvious thing, but he is facing Garrett Cole. So like, it's not like it was maybe as obvious to everyone else. So and, and, and he went out Baseball's there. It's pretty cool, though. By the way, when you get literally three zeros and a three from your pitcher and still cash in the big last, that's not bad. This baseball <laughs> man, it's crazy. I know. Huh? It's <laughs> crazy. And we're gonna say that we're gonna have like a drinking game for the course of the season. However many times we say, "Man, that's baseball," where it was just gonna be. It's like the old that's really, poker really adage. Like it's the same <laughs> thing. It's like back in the days with the poker. Right. That's poker. That's right. That's poker. That's right. Um, all right. Well, let's get into it. We're going to go uh, game by game here. It's not obviously a huge slate. So, we, you know, differentiation is important. Um, right and one. just, a, just a, a reminder of that. I'm trying to understand the first total, like the total in this first game. It feels low. Um, obviously, I, I think highly of Severino. I don't know how long he's going to go, um, you know, as Evan as a real pitcher. But it feels like a low total for two really really good offenses which i'm wondering by the end of the day if people are going to play this because if they're not going to i probably will consider it on this slate and from the hitting side yeah okay. um because i think gaussman you could make a good argument for him i think you can make an argument for severino i'm a little surprised that severino is not getting any any ownership at all at least in the early projections um, I know he only pitched three, three innings his first time out. And I guess that's why, but there is an outside chance they stretch him and he's 7,400. It's just worth considering, but, uh, he also has a four and a half K prop versus Gaussman who has a five and a half K prop at 1100 more. And he's supposed to be 40% Gaussman. And I see like 3% Severino. So I know it'll probably change throughout the day. Just kind of thought it was worth noting. And, um, I, I, I just, so that, that's my sort of attitude towards this game is I, I think that I will take some shots in this game if, uh, if no one wants to play it. And otherwise, uh, if it was a big slate, I don't think I'd be overly interested. How about you, Sheets? Yeah, I'm coming up right now. Again, it's a, I didn't realize how, how small a slate it was when I ran all my stuff. It's so funny. Only because I'm like looking at the slate here now that I even, do I even notice. Um, I'm currently getting, uh, I'm drafting Severino as kind of as the third best pitcher. Um, again, but I didn't know that he might have, have, um, of innings limitations uh, is that what you're Every, you just assume you're, everybody does especially oh okay so it's not like something specific to him well, he okay. picked three innings in his first start okay oh, okay um well if that's the case i'm probably going to stay away i mean three i mean if, if he picks three in his, what is what is he going to get now four i mean like i don't, I don't know it's uh, no, that's not the way it always works though some people do that and then they'll play the pitch the guy like you know depending on how it's, it just depends on how the game goes really so anyway, so I like Severino as like kind of my third best pitcher right now. And I, I currently wasn't getting to either of these offenses, but I like what I, I like the idea. Remember on a six game slate, you have to have a little more vision. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, look, the Toronto and the Yankees are teams that you can never just say, well, I just can't play any of them. You know, it, it, they, they always they're always sort of in play and a six game slate especially when there's going to be, you know, big chalk in Colorado, I imagine, um, uh, you know, you, you're probably going to be looking for something else. So um, yeah, I'll, I'm in there. I mean, I, I don't really have them right now rated so well, but I can, I can be talked into it. And again, so Severino, I like a little bit and Gausman is kind of like a second tier option for me. Well, that's good for you then because he's the, going to be one of the most, maybe the most popular pitcher on the slate. Oh yeah. Um, and and by the way, I get the art. Like, I want to say something about Gausman though. Just, just all right, what did this guy do to Eddie? I mean, I'm surprised he came back here because he goes, he finally gets out after his streaky career before in Baltimore and everything. He gets to San Francisco, becomes an All Star, but like he, you know, one of the better pitchers in baseball, and goes back to, to to the American League East. And it just 
just feels like it could be a recipe a little bit for disaster for him. Um, but I do think overall getting paid, paid, I guess. I mean, you know, what he's getting paid, I guess. No, no, I'm sure. I just thought it was interesting to go back to the, to the AL least after, after really, really turning his whole career on. Well, here in the next game, we're going to have our most popular pitcher on the slate, which is Otani and uh, Sheets, your, your old friend, Dane Dunning. What do you think about this game? Yeah. So, um, First of all, I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out. Uh, I, I might be getting confused, but is is Kevin Gaussman another guy that, that made you six figures? I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And was it with Bundy or was it a separate one? I had some big tournaments where they won for me. I, don't, I can't remember if they were together, but I know that they both have been on, I think, multiple ones, each of them. I do remember the guys. It was before they were anything. It was before they were, you know, when they were like. When they were like 5,600, right. right. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, so uh, Angels against Texas, yes, I, I can see why Otani probably be the most popular pitcher. I have him rated as the top pitcher. Um, and I also have the um, – this is interesting because I, I have the Angels kind of like one of three stacks I would go to outside of the Colorado game. Um, and, as you know, you, you kind of think about what you think you know and maybe what you, you know, actually know. See, I always have this 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 idea of Dane Dunning being just a control guy that throws sinkers, that doesn't strike anybody out, that you can't really get get a lot of power off of. And I'm just wondering if that's actually the case. You know, I didn't yes. I didn't I didn't really dive down because that's that's the way I remember it. Um, but uh, so I don't know exactly how how much I'm going to love the Angels when it comes down to it. If that's in fact the case with Dane Dunning, so I wanted to do a little more deep dive into this. Wanted to ask you about this situation. And so, so right now I have the angels as a possible stack outside of Colorado, Chicago. And by the way, when I keep saying stack, I'm with you on a, on a slate this size, you know, in, in a six game slate, um, I'm less likely to have just like exclusive five man stacks, you know, now, yeah. I'm, now, now I'm have a little more uh, going back to this word, a little more vision with respect to how I'm building. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that, that's where I am in this. And I'm not really getting to, to Texas uh, from, from the hitting here. Yeah. And I'm just going to remind everybody one important thing. Like it is important to note that almost no stacks are winning. Well, some are winning and like people are like, Oh, but look in this, in this single entry, this and that, this stack one, I'm like, yeah, because that's a single entry tournament and 99% of them are playing that way. Right. It's almost impossible for someone else to win. Right. The winners of the hundred K. So few lineups to compete for that, for that, for that, for that role. (laughs) But even the 777 winner yesterday was, was uh, not a full stack. Um, so just, it's important, especially early in the year, stacking makes less and less sense early in the year than it does later in the season. And even still, I will argue still that it's the lazy man's way of playing DFS. And I don't agree that it's, you know, I, I don't think that there's not times where it, sh- it makes the most sense, but I don't think it's sh- it, for it to be an automatic rule for everybody. And if you don't do it, you're an idiot. I just don't agree with that wet line of thinking. Um, in this game, I think that Otani makes the most sense as a pitcher. I think he's perfectly fine. Like, I like him. Um, always has a little downside because, you know, he can be a little bit erratic. But I, I do like him, the, like, probably the most of any pitcher right now. And Dunning, I think, is in play on the other side. He threw 74 pitches, five innings his first time out. Could get up to 80 plus, 6,400. Just open to thinking about it. Not really excited about it. Um, and then... One thing is because Otani does blow up, you're not going to get much ownership for what it's worth on the Texas side of things. If you had a lousy starting pitcher out there that Brad Miller um, would be like a chalk again at, at 3,600 or one of the chalky guys, he's not going to be tonight. Um, on the Angels side, it's uh, it's going to be Trout, and then we don't know what the hell we're doing, right? Like, I don't know. It's hard to stack the Angels when, when Otani pitches. Um, I don't really know who else I'd want to play outside of Trout and Rendon. I, I mean – I think, I think that both those guys are great plays, but I don't know that I need to get involved in, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not interested overall in this as a stack uh, today, which may end up biting me, but not, not something I'm worried about overlooking right now. There's just better stacks to me. Um, All right. Let's talk about Musgrove and Morton. I think Musgrove will be the other highest owned player on the slate by the time it sounds about right. Um, Yeah, I got him as rated number two, which means he's probably, which usually means he's probably going to be the second. <laughs> I still, that's the way projections work usually. Um, uh, so when I when I talk about the guys that I have like rated the best, it's really not accounting for ownership literally at all. Um, we're going right. to deal with that, you know, as we get into builds a little later. 
Um, but I do have Musgrove rated as the second best pitch, uh, second best value on the slate. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I didn't really, I have Morton rated uh, as kind of a secondary option. Um, and with respect to the hitting, I, I have this weird feeling I'm supposed to want to play some Atlanta as a leverage off of Musgrove, but I'm just not quite getting to it right now. Um, so for me, right now, it's just kind of chalky, just, just Musgrove, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I like both these pitchers. Um, I'm not going to say I won't end up with a one-off of somebody in this game, but I, I have no interest in the bats, and I like both pitchers. I prefer Musgrove, but I think you could make a – one thing I'd point out is, like, people will say – they'll look at innings pitch a lot of times. They'll say, oh, he pitched this many innings. Oh, he did this. And don't look at the innings pitch. Look at how many pitches the guys throw. Um, Musgrove was incredibly efficient in the last game, and uh, Morton did, struggled a little bit in the sixth. So – I think Morton has a higher cap on his pitches probably than these other guys do, but you know, he's a little more expensive. Just, just keeping that in mind. I do think both of them, I do think both Otani and um, Morton will throw enough pitches. I just am saying like, just that, that's, I, I like the idea of Morton as a pivot, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, also everybody's making their second start. So at least they will be a little bit more extended than the first start. All right. Casey Mize and Zach Granke. Interesting. I actually think that uh, God, because of a bad outing and no strikeouts, um, we're going to give up on Granky. I, I might take a shot on Granky at 6,800. It's, uh, I don't know. that I, I'm not going to play Mize today. I, I kind of like his, his, you know, I think he's more talented than maybe he gets credit for. But I do think Granky is kind of interesting, and I also have no argument with either side of the stacks in this game. How about you? Yeah, I do. I have a little bit of, uh, of interest in Kansas City um, from the hitting. Not, you know, not at, not at the top of the list, but. I have them as, as one of the one of the non Colorado uh, teams I I, I want to uh, I want to consider. Um, Granky, you know he's he's um. <laughs> if anybody's interested, you know you just you Google and look for YouTube videos of like Zach Granky. You you could stay up for like fifteen hours like watching Zach Zach Granky videos. He's one of the one of the like I don't know what weirdest coolest like just most interesting freaking people like to kind of like look at old videos of and interviews i mean he's there's something really really wrong with him but then again there's something probably really like high level about him too i just such a fine line in between that uh yeah he's, that, a, he's, that, he's a lunatic 100 percent. that distinction i mean i i was i was a i was, didn't want to well, get canceled for using words like that since i got in trouble yesterday for that the other one um <laughs> but, but but uh but uh but zach Granke, i look whenever you have a small slate and and you you're looking for a pitcher somewhere. I, I and you have Detroit on the other side of it. You 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 know you could talk me into some Granky, um, but he's not certainly one of the top options. Uh, but I do I do I'm, I am getting to some Kansas City right now in my in my uh, in my analysis. So. Yeah, I like Kansas City better than I like Detroit. Um, I think that the you know you have Bobby Witt, you can play cheap at third base. Um, you have Santana, you could play cheap at first if you wanted to go that route. Then you got Ben Attendee and then Merrifield is just underpriced as well as Mondesi being a reasonable price. So all of these guys, I could see their stack at a low, low cost making a lot of sense. So I'm actually going to put the Royals as a little bit of a, a possible for me. Cause I, I don't really love the idea. I'm sort of interested in the Yankees and, and Toronto, but more, that's more of a secondary stack thing. I could see going, going uh, with a full Royal stack with how cheap they are to combine, you know, maybe a four in a four, four or something like that. Or or, a th- or even a five man, but I would probably rather do like a three or four man with the Royals, and uh, yeah, I think they make a lot of sense. And and I do think on Detroit, uh, I'm going to mention just Javier Baez. I think is a really strong play at 4700 as a one off. So uh, Chicago and Colorado, this is going to be the chalk sheet. So what are your thoughts here? So my thoughts are Justin Steele balled out his first start. I mean, he was he was good. Uh, that was one of the I, I had him in that. Uh, in that uh, mm-hmm. in that game, uh, he's fifty four hundred. Um, you know, playing going to Colorado's rough business. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, but if Colorado is going to be the most popular stack on the slate, um, I don't know. I could. I I've, listen. I played worse. <laughs> I really have. I've, I've done. I've done worse in my life than play a guy that's that's looking pretty good this year uh, in a spot against whom everybody's going to be highly owned. So. I'll, I'll, I'll support that. And then when I want to ask you about Freeland, when you, when you, when I get to you, because you're always really good at knowing which of these Colorado 
guys are like Colorado specialists. You know what I mean? Which guys can actually kind of hold everybody down and as opposed to which guys just can just give it up, give it up. So um for well, the ace of their staff, so if that helps. What's that? He's the ace of their staff. So oh, he is. Well, he's, yeah. you, oh, you think he's better than the other one, than Marquis? He's he's con- he's the guy who started opening day. It's all okay. I can take it on. Fair it's enough. all you can take to it at this point. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I mean, you know, it's 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 just not that easy to say. Like, okay, there's cows in Colorado. They're they're projecting with the highest run total. They're just going to always get there. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so if the ownership does start to really just pile up, I mean, like, I don't want to steal Bobby's thunder, but uh, you you should probably, if you like the hitting, just do it. Bobby might recommend and just instead of full stacking either team, just take one or two from from for each of them or whichever one you like the most. Not 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 play the four man and just or even the or especially not the five man. Just get yourself a little different that way and get yourself exposure to it. Um, um, that's pretty much where I'm at. I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. Colorado's rated as the top stack on the board. Chicago's rated second, um, and that's you know what everybody else is gonna see. And uh, hashtag it's baseball, so <laughs> you could you don't have to play it. And I guess that's going to be the extent of the analysis. Yeah, I, I um, I'm trying to figure out who I want to play because, like, well, Freeland is 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 actually a probably better pitcher than he gets credit for. He's not like a, a great pitcher, but like, I, I don't know. I, I think I guess Marquis hurt to start opening day. That's why it probably happened. But um, I, I personally would would try to get exposure here. But like, I mean, Contreras, uh, Frazier, assuming that he does lead off. They're just, they just didn't price anybody up, which is kind of frustrating. And then Wisdom, I mean, all of these guys are really, really – they would be – they probably will be priority plays for me to get in in some places. I just the, – the full five-man Colorado stack at high ownership doesn't feel great. Um, and you've got, like, guys batting ninth who are projected to have a high ownership. I, the guy who I like, if he's batting at the bottom of the order, is Ian Happ or Michael Hermosillo just because you can probably get lower ownership on them because people just aren't as familiar with them. Um, I mean, I'm oh, sorry with Hermosillo, but, uh, but Hap just because of the lineup sticker shock, if he does back, you know, eighth again, that might, that might get some people off of him. So um, on the Colorado side, I think Gritchick is the logical cheap savings, but you, depending on where Connor Joe and Garrett Hampson hit, I guess you could say, especially Connor Joe at the top would be the next guy. Um and I think that they're, they're good plays individually. I think you've got, you know, finally Chris Bryant wanted to prove that maybe he's a top 15 player. So he went to Colorado, still not a top 15 player in baseball. Wasn't when I said it still isn't. Um, and uh, yeah, th- those are the, the, the priority guys in the game for me would be Witt, Grichik, Frazier, Contreras, Wisdom, Connor Joe, and then Chris Bryant. But I don't feel, uh, I don't feel like I want to be playing hitters at 30, 40%, you know what I mean? In general. So no. Um, CJ Cron, you could throw in that mix as well. Uh, maybe you get a little bit of lower ownership on Blackman and the lefty lefty and Blackman's too cheap. They're just all too cheap. It's, it's going to be hard for, if you put up, it's going to be hard for people not to want to give you Colorado because of that. Now Saberson might not because of how they're projecting for, for you, what everybody else is going to do. Um, but in general, that's, they're going to be really popular. Um, and so that's the only thing we're, we're really fading here. That's pretty much all I got. All right, so you didn't like any of that. Um, you get to play the Dodgers again if you want. Um, and it's going to be sort of a bullpen game. You got uh, Sessa starting and then uh, San Martin coming in. Um, and you got Bueller on the other side. And, and, every, and every single, not every single slate, but what seemed like every single slate last year, this was the theme. Like Bueller rated to be not the best pitcher on the slate, and he was always in the winning lineup. <laughs> I think he does rate to be the best pitcher on the slate. So I actually want to, I, I should, should have made an amendment. I think he's actually, I changed my mind. I think he's going to be the most popular. You think so? Okay. I'd be surprised if he's not at least like in the top three, he'll be right there with, with uh, Musgrove and Otani. Okay. Um, I have him uh, from I'm a pure value perspective rated fourth. Um, but only because again, I don't know what to do with Severino. Um and on FanDuel, I have him like kind of like, you know, definitely top three, but not, not the top guy. Oh, wait, who do I have? Oh, I was, I'm seeing a guy I have projected on FanDuel who's not starting. I got to fix that. I had like Gibson starting, I think, for Texas, I think, I, I believe. Um, I don't think any, oh, for, I think you're talking about for Cincinnati, because I don't think we know. Oh, oh Cincinnati, starting. I don't know. I have Gibson going here. I don't know what, what that's all about. I, obviously, these are going to be fixed. But um, yeah, I mean, I like the Dodgers. I <laughs> mean, why not? Um, yeah. 
uh, you know, I have the Dodgers. Well, I'll tell you right now, I have Dodgers, KC, and, and the Angels as my my non Colorado Chicago's, and um, it's kind of silly for me not to put the Dodgers number one. I mean, you know, uh, that's just kind of where I'm at. You know, just keep waiting and waiting and looking. If the lineups aren't everything's not going your way, I mean, you could always like pivot and do whatever. But I would, I would, I would play these Dodgers probably as my priority before we get to like Bueller and and, and all the other stuff. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask what 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 did you think of the uh, of of uh, taking Kershaw out yesterday? Oh, I, that's what I started the show with. I, I was furious. Um, I just think it's it's a, it's absolutely wrong um, with at eighty pitches with the perfect game when you have none and you're one of the best pitchers of all time and the best of the generation. It's a pretty big deal to get that 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 perfect game, um, especially for that guy. So I, I just I can't agree with it. It makes I. I understand most of the times, like if he was at like 95 or something, like sure, okay, it's first game of the season, sure. But like, come on, guys, like give the guy a chance. Like, it's not like we were talking about throwing 147 pitches like they, they let them do in the, in, for the Mets that time, which ruined his career. If Kershaw can throw 100 pitches. Like, I, you can't talk to me differently. He threw 78 in his last uh, warm up thing. It just seems stupid to have the hard cap at that moment. I just think it's, I think it's really bad for baseball, to be honest with you. And I think it's something that's going to get people, people fr- get frustrated about the resting of NBA players. Well, baseball, not letting your pitchers get extended and coddling things is, I just, I just don't like it. I don't like any part of it, to be honest. I think it's atrocious. <laughs> I really do. I think it's, I think it's a disaster, uh, oh, a disaster, whatever. Baseball has always been also about, about the lure and about the history and all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, as opposed to like football, like we talked about before, like if, if someone had like, you know, maybe 194 yards or something like that, you know, maybe they don't bring them in. If like the game's out of hand, maybe they don't do whatever if he's hurt, whatever it is. But it's so rare to have a freaking perfect game. You know what I mean? And and to be honest, I mean, he's freaking earned it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, just let the guy freaking play. You know, and, and let's, listen, 10 years from now, nobody's going to remember who won the freaking Dodgers, you know, what's his name game and like game two of like of, of 2022. You know what I mean? But, but that perfect game could have gone down in freaking history and baseball is a lot of that. A lot, a lot of it's about history. Like on the one hand, the people go eight shit, all bent out of shape about what to do with the hall of fame. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they'll be like, well, I don't want to leave Kershaw and God forbid he throws 82 pitches or something like that. And and, and and like, I also think it's really dumb when pitchers get like, however many, I mean, look, you can have Nolan Ryan for the seven, no hitters fine. But there's no reason why we have to like, if we're going to, if we're going to use it as a part of how you describe someone historically, then you right. absolutely can't not leave him in. Like if that game was a Dodger stadium, they would have been absolutely losing their freaking minds. I promise you it would have been, I mean, I, I, everybody I probably, here, that's the first thing I looked at when I saw the, uh, that what, you know, what the line score was after six innings. I didn't yeah. realize it at the time. I'm like, wait, is this game at Dodger stadium? Uh, if it was a Dodger stadium, they would have had to have. Yeah, I mean, the Dodger uh, fans are all pretty well well in on the secret that Dave Roberts is one of the worst managers in the history of baseball. Oh, really? He doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. All, I mean, but really, it's it's just analytics managing, but it's over analytics managing, and they get to it. They, I'm so happy they changed the rule to have to face three batters because it was getting out of control. Like, I mean, hmm. I was ready for him to start bringing in different relievers mid pit, mid mid at bat. Like it was, it was just wow. constant. He would, he would use nine relievers in a row. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. And it's also not enjoyable to watch the game. You know what I mean? You have to take no, a it's not. break every time. No, it's so, not. And also he, he, he sat, he sits our guys. Like, I mean, I, even the way he started with his, the lineups this year, like, yeah, you're lucky. You, hey, you're, you're in a great spot, buddy. You've got the best team in baseball without a doubt. It's been the best team in baseball for basically every year of the past 12 years. And you know, I don't know, win something. In, uh, in, in little league, uh, my in, in list, at least in this part of the country, they have extremely hard pitch counts on the on the on the on the fourth fifth, the third fourth and fifth graders, and they make it like it, literally if it's in the middle of a batter, they'll make you take them out. You know they don't even let yeah, you finish yeah. the batter, and you know if, if you have to have had X amount of rest or whatever it is, and every and everybody's like you know whatever I I get it you know whatever it is, but my son when he was in fourth grade I want to say fourth grade maybe third grade no fourth grade. He was pitching, and it's only a freaking six inning game anyway. Okay, he was he was pitching a perfect game, literally a perfect game, mm-hmm. and they were on the last batter, and he threw ball one, and the opposing 
manager came out and demanded that he get taken out of the game because of the hard pitch count, right? Mm -hmm. It was like 10 to nothing, oh, okay? Man. And they took, <laughs> they took my son out. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. Yep. Well, okay, so, I mean, just to, to highlight today's – so, I, I've got it, Bueller – Wait, do you uh, like the Dodgers? Yeah, the Dodgers okay. are my number, Dodgers are my number one. Uh, oh, okay. I think you might need to do a wraparound stack if you want to get different a little bit. Um, I mean, the, the, the my logical ones are the Dodgers, Chicago, and Colorado. Nothing earth-shattering. I will use the Royals to get off of a little bit of the chalk. And I'm not opposed to using some bats from the Tigers, but I just don't want to go for the, the full stack. Uh, but the pitchers in order for me are, are Bueller, Otani, Musgrove, Morton. Maybe you could argue for Musgrove or Ota Otani, um, and it's close. But then, and then some of the one-offs or, or mini stacks, the guys who I'm using, uh, Witt, Grichik, Frazier, Contreras, Wisdom, Joe, Bryant. And I was looking at FanDuel. FanDuel does start at 630 today, guys, so just keep that in mind. And it's uh, the only difference is that you can – you can honestly play two games that I don't really have that much interest in playing if you, if you play on FanDuel. So that's, that's the, I just wanted to throw that out there. And I will be here at six Eastern sheets. Any, any, do we know about you? A good if, question. All right. Well, if not, nobody uh, I will let you know. All right. Let me know. And I'll, and if not, maybe I can try and get roadie on one of these. But times, it's nice so. and chill. Do you know what I mean? And, and we have, a, is there NBA tonight? No, there's no NBA tonight. It's a nice chill state. I can, I can handle it. I no love it. I good love day it. to not be here. If you're, if there was one. Um, but I will be live 6 Eastern with you guys. And I'll be in Discord all day. Again, I want to remind everybody to please leave comments in the True DFS uh, support channel. We want to know everything we can do. We're, we're making a lot of changes to the site, as you guys can see regularly. And we'd like to know what you would like to see as uh, what would help you out better. One of the things we're going to be doing, and please DM me about this on, on Discord. We want to try and get people together. And we're going to, me and Rody are going to do a roundtable session and just lineup review, talk some strategy, sort of general lineup construction. We want to really, you know, try to get, get into the, to the, to the teaching part of it. And also it helps us as well. So it's uh that should be great. And then I'm sure we'll have sheets on there doing that in the future. Just let me know. And once we get a group together, we're going to, uh, we're going to start doing that uh, once a week. So uh, hit me up in the DMS if you want to be a part of that. Anyway, good luck guys, please like, and subscribe to the video for sheets. I'm Bobby saying we hope one of you guys takes it down tonight.